InfraScanner, handheld brain injury diagnostics. The InfraScanner accurately detects intracranial hematomas using the unique light-absorbing properties of hemoglobin and the non-invasive, non-ionizing nature of near-infrared technology. The basic method for intracranial hematomas detection with near-infrared spectroscopy is based on the differential light absorption associated with injured versus non-injured parts of the brain. The InfraScanner compares the left and right sides of the brain in four different anatomic areas. The scanner is placed successively in the left and right frontal, temporal, parietal, and occipital areas of the head, and the absorbance of light at selected wavelengths is recorded. The difference in optical density in the different areas instantly reveals the location of trauma to the brain. The detection depth is superficial, within 3.5 centimeters of the skin surface, where blood typically migrates in most cases of bleeding. Patient measurement is typically completed within two to three minutes per scan, and the device can detect hematomas greater than 3.5 milliliters in volume. The InfraScanner is not a replacement for a CT scan. It is a simple, easy-to-use screening tool that can be used to identify high-risk patients requiring prioritization for CT scanning and neurosurgical treatment. Place the InfraScanner in the cradle to charge the unit. Insert the InfraScanner vertically and then lean it backward, making sure to engage the spring-loaded cradle pins. To remove the InfraScanner from the cradle, simply tilt the unit forward and lift. To determine if the InfraScanner is charging properly, simply take notice of the cradle. When the green light is on, it means the charging cradle is plugged in and powered on. When the InfraScanner is in the cradle and the amber light is on, the unit is charging. When the amber light goes out, the unit is fully charged. When running on the rechargeable battery pack, the InfraScanner will operate for 90 minutes, taking approximately 15 scans. It takes approximately 6 hours to fully recharge the battery. If AA batteries are used, the InfraScanner will run for 120 minutes, taking approximately 20 scans. Make sure the system is charged. If you are getting multiple error codes, put in a fresh set of AA batteries or recharge the unit. A disposable fiber optic shield is required to power on the InfraScanner. To install the shield, simply fit the straight edge groove into the cutout ledge on the front of the scanner and then snap the shield into place on the back side. Wait approximately 15 seconds and the unit will power up. If the shield is left on InfraScanner and the scanner is not in use, the unit will start beeping after 8 minutes to alert the user that the InfraScanner's batteries are being worn down. To power off the unit, simply remove the disposable shield. Press the center round green button to select Measure. Take note of the scan number for the patient's chart, and then press the center round green button again to select Next. The head diagram appears, and you are now ready to scan. The measurement screen shows a diagram of the top of the head. Notice the location of the ears and nose to help with the left-right pattern sequence. Starting at the left frontal location, press either of the two measurement buttons and immediately release. Be careful to maintain direct and constant contact between both probes and the patient's head after releasing the measurement button. You will hear a beep and the screen will go dark. When you hear a second beep or see the screen flash back on, the scan is complete. There are four measurements that must be recorded on both sides of the patient's head for a total of eight measurement results. You always begin on the left side of the head for each measurement, unless the InfraScanner tells you to reverse the order. The two frontal measurements are taken just under the hairline, with the probe closest to the patient's nose lining up directly above the appropriate pupil. For high foreheads or receding hairlines, scan approximately 4 centimeters or 1 and a half inches above the eyebrow. The two temporal measurements are taken in temporal fossa, keeping the unit centered over the top of the ear. The two parietal measurements are taken directly above the ears, midway between the ear and midline of the skull. The two occipital measurements are taken on the back of the head, 
midway between the top of the ear and occipital protuberance, 2 to 3 centimeters, or 1 inch, above the top of the ear. If you are in an area where you cannot hear the beep or see the screen flash, such as the scene of a trauma or in bright sunlight, simply count to 10 for the first measurement and count to 6 for the second measurement. A double beep at the end of the scan indicates an error. If you hear this, check the screen and follow the error code. Press the center round green button to clear the error message and rescan. The InfraScanner's near-infrared light comes from a diode laser and reflects back to the silicon detector. It is essential that scans be performed in a manner that ensures constant and consistent scalp contact with both optical fibers simultaneously, and that hair does not interfere with the laser's signal. Make sure no hair is caught under the fiber tips of the shield, and that both tips are touching the scalp at all times during the measurement. Good clean contact with the scalp and firm yet gentle pressure are both critical to ensure an accurate reading and to avoid false positive readings. Always support the head of the patient with the opposite hand to ensure constant contact and patient comfort. If the patient is bedridden, ask a team member to help turn the patient slightly on their side to take the occipital measurements. The most effective way to make good contact with the scalp is to make a part in the hair at the desired measurement location and place the fiber optic tips in the area of exposed scalp using firm but gentle pressure. For more tips on successfully managing different hair types while using the InfraScanner, see the Managing Hair tutorial. One feature of the InfraScanner is the dual measurement buttons on the back of the device. This allows the user to flip the device to more easily measure the temporal and occipital locations. These areas can pose a challenge due to the shoulder and or the back muscles for athletic and larger patients. Pivot the unit to make ideal contact as needed. The top left-right arrow keys navigate the operator through the InfraScanner's on-screen menus. The center round green button is used to select or execute a desired task. The two up and down bottom arrow keys are used to edit a task. For example, you would use the up and down buttons when navigating back to a measurement point to rescan, or when navigating through the stored scans to select a desired measurement number in the archive screen. After the InfraScanner powers up, the home screen appears. The battery indicator icon is in the top right. In the middle of the screen is a diagram to explain the keypad usage. At the bottom of the screen are three screen choices for measure, archive, and settings. By using the left-right arrows to navigate to the settings screen and selecting it with the green button, three options will appear, date time, brightness, and battery. Use the left-right arrow keys to scroll through the three settings screens. The date time screen displays the year, month, and day, along with the hour and minute. Use the up arrow to decrease the values of the years, months, days, hours, and minutes. Use the down arrow to increase the values. Use the left and right arrows to move between fields. To save a selection, press the center green button. If batteries are removed from the scanner and not replaced immediately, the user will have to adjust the time and possibly the date upon subsequent restart. The battery screen shows the current battery status. The brightness screen allows operators to select night or day by toggling the up-down arrow buttons. Select Save and press the center green button to select the brightness mode you'd like. Please note that the technical button on the lower right is for technician use only. It should not be used in normal operation. When taking a measurement of the patient, the blue square will always tell you where the next scan should be taken, and the black dot indicates where the measurement has been completed. When both sides of one measurement location have been completed, a green circle, all clear, for a hematoma negative reading, or a red circle, danger for a hematoma positive reading will show. The numbers below the F, T, 
P and O on the head diagram show you the relative optical density difference between the left and right sides. Anything over 0.20 will show a hematoma positive or red danger reading. The rings seen in the red circle are added to help colorblind users read the measurement correctly. Anything 0.20 and below will show a hematoma negative or green all clear reading. Please note that because of the natural breakdown of hemoglobin, InfraScanner's near-infrared signal system will not detect a chronic hematoma not of recent origin, and the device is not intended for that use. The archive screen is where measurements are stored. By selecting View and using the up-down arrow key to select the scan to be reviewed, the scan measurement will be the number followed by the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. When the measurement number is selected, the head diagram along with the relative optical density number at each measurement point can be reviewed. High signal means too much ambient light. Shield the light guide area with your hand and repeat measurement. Low signal means hair may be trapped under the fiber optic tips. Comb or wiggle the tips to get better contact with the scalp. Consult the Managing Hair tutorial to troubleshoot specific hair types. Always rescan. Saturated start in reverse order means the infrascanner is potentially detecting a hematoma. Follow the directions and rescan, starting on the right side of the head. Reverse order. Time out means the infrascanner needs more time to analyze. Move a couple of millimeters over and rescan. Be sure to use symmetrical placement on both sides. Unstable signal means there were variations in the signal level, indicating an unsteady reading. Be cautious to use equal pressure so that both tips are placed evenly on the head and hold your hand steady. Low battery means it is time to replace the AA batteries or recharge the battery pack. The most common mistakes that can cause error codes are low battery, non-uniform pressure, pressing and holding the measurement buttons when trying to initiate a measurement, non-symmetrical location for readings, hair under the fiber optic tips, too much overhead light, hair gel or hair weaves. And remember, whenever you get a hematoma positive or red danger reading, rescan up to two additional times to verify. Different hair types pose different challenges to achieving ideal scalp contact. One technique that will be consistent regardless of hair type is the need to gently comb or wiggle the fiber optic shield tips in the measurement locations to ensure there is no hair trapped under the tips. Different pigments of both hair and skin reflect light differently and can therefore affect the measurements. Getting good scalp contact with the probes is key to a successful scan. Please note that InfraScanner cannot scan through wigs, weaves, or toupees. Some general managing hair tips include, for high foreheads or receding hairlines, measure approximately four centimeters or one and a half inches above the eyebrow for the frontal measurements. Properly parting the hair to reveal the scalp is one of the most important and vital techniques for proper operation of the InfraScanner. To more effectively part the hair, go against the direction of hair growth. It allows for cleaner and more defined parts. When parting the hair in the occipital region, make the part the entire way across the area with both hands. Hold the hair up with one hand, then pick up the InfraScanner and take both measurements. Let's explore some different hair types and tips for getting a successful scan every time. A bald scalp is the easiest subject. Simply place the fiber optic tips on the eight measurement locations, making sure to maintain contact with both tips on the scalp throughout the entire measurement until you hear the beep or see the screen flash. Very short, military, or crew cut hair may be difficult to part, but using the combing technique with the fiber optic tips through the hair should achieve good contact. Be sure not to press hard when combing through the hair to avoid trapping any hairs under the fiber optics before pressing the measurement button. 
Long, light hair is no more challenging than short hair, except that there is more of it, which can become trapped under the fiber optic tips. Pay special attention to making clean parts at the same location on both sides of the head. Ensure the tips are placed directly on the scalp exposed by the part and measure. For fine hair or flyaways, consider using a water-based gel like ultrasound gel to keep the part defined while you measure. Curly hair will also pose challenges to the user. The hair may be thick or fine, but almost always has more tangles than straight hair. The best technique is to use index fingers on both hands to make a part in the hair. Secure the hair with your non-dominant hand, then pick up the infrascanner and wiggle the probe tips into the part. Be sure to secure the head with the hand that is holding the hair, releasing the hair if necessary to ensure constant contact with the scalp throughout the measurement. Natural African hair is often quite thick and can be easily caught under the probe tips. With darker pigmentation both for skin and hair, pay close attention to establishing an extremely clean part for the measurement location. Use both hands if necessary to make the part. With short, curly dark hair, for example, it may be difficult to make a part in the hair. Consider using a water-based gel like ultrasound gel to define the part more clearly. Certain hairstyles actually make measurements easier because they expose the scalp. However, care must be taken because of the height of the cornrows and braids. Ensure the probe tips maintain consistent contact in the spaces available with these hairstyles. Rotate the unit if needed to make optimal contact at each measurement location. To ensure symmetry, if you rotate the unit on the one side, make sure to rotate it at the same angle on the opposite side of the head. It is important to clean the infrascanner with an antimicrobial wipe after each use. To ensure the unit is completely clean, follow this simple procedure. Remove the disposable shield. Each disposable shield is approved for single patient use. A new shield must be used for each patient. However, you may clean each patient's individual shield with an alcohol swab after each use, and you can use the shield up to 10 times. Make sure to pay special attention to the tips of the optical fibers while cleaning. Next, clean the infrascanner by wiping it down completely with an antimicrobial wipe, remembering to clean the screen and the measurement buttons on the back of the unit. All measurements are automatically saved on the infrascanner. Each measurement is saved as a text file. The name of each data file is the date, time, and serial number of that measurement. To copy the files to your PC, simply connect the Cradle's USB port to the PC's USB port with the provided cable. Place the infrascanner in the Cradle. Press the blue Cradle On button to turn on the infrascanner. The Active Sync or Device Center window will pop up automatically. Click on the Browse the Content of Your Device under File Management. A Windows Explorer window will open. Double-click on My Windows Mobile-Based Device. Drag and drop the HS Data folder located on the storage card to the PC. This folder contains both the data files and the patient database. You can also copy individual data files from the HS Data folder. FDA-cleared and CE-marked InfraScanner has been studied at some of the most distinguished teaching, specialty, and pediatric hospitals throughout the U.S. Early screening for intracranial bleeding in patients with traumatic brain injury is critical because the timing of neurosurgical intervention is a significant factor that can positively or adversely impact patient outcomes. Now, for the first time ever, the application of near-infrared technology can be applied in a portable, handheld device that empowers clinicians to know what's happening inside the human skull, even before symptoms of brain injury appear. InfraScanner puts the power to heal in the palm of your hand.